summarize the, this activity. It's really beautiful because it's explain what well that we are connected in, in everything, the idea, system, and the world with plants, animals, and invertebrates like me, and like an insect like me. <laughs> and and um, uh, we don't know if it, there are some questions from Professor Stefan, and we have two different uh, systems, or, or uh, we uh, wait to institutional greetings from uh, Panama Embassy, and uh, at the end, the institutional greetings is possible to, to see, to ask something with some questions we Stefan, uh, Eduardo, and Sergio, if you want. And uh, Stefan, only three minutes to do the all the activity of the Panama Embassy that are our colleagues in uh, uh, activity of research. And uh, for uh, for uh, this, we are really happy to have uh, here the Elambacada de la de Panama and Roma. Y no sé si la, los representantes de la embajada necesitan que uh, dar un saludo, pero prefería antes mostrar el saludo institucional de la, de la embajadora. Good morning. On this occasion, first of all, I regret not being able to be with you in person due to other previous commitments. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the prestigious University of Tusha for the opportunity to participate in this important international event, which brings together researchers, teachers, students, and interested people who participate in this important workshop. I am sure that Professor Smith's presentation has been interesting and invaluable, and that through it, he has evidenced the richness of the Panamanian tropical forest, the fauna of our country, and especially our variety of many species. Information that was possibly unknown to many of you, given the distance that separates us. For this reason, as the Panamanian Embassy, we make efforts not only to make our wonderful country known, but also to strengthen ties with friendly countries such as Italy. Very especially, I would like to highlight the efforts that we make with the University of Tusha to execute agreements that allow, allow Panamanian students and professionals to attend the headquarters of this university, as well as to be able to exchange students and teachers between this university and the University of Panama, and some other initiatives that we are reviewing in order to complement each other. I thank you once again for this valuable opportunity, and we are available to continue strengthening Panamanian and Italian education. Thank you. And thank you very much for this opportunity to hear the institutional greetings from the university, from uh, Ambassador uh, of Panama. Y agradezco muchísimo de esa posibilidad de escuchar acá en Viterbo la embajadora de la embajada de Panama en Roma y para toda, toda la actividad que se está haciendo para permitir de a los estudiantes italianos de irse en Panamá y lo mismo de estudiantes de Panamá de eh, llegar acá en Viterbo para estudiar a la Universidad de la Tucha, pero también para permitir el intercambio de, la, de los docentes, de, de los investigadores de italianos de poder ir en Panamá y lo mismo de los investigadores de Panamá de llegar acá. Esa es una oportunidad que estamos desarrollando también con la embajada y con la Universidad de la Tucha, con Unitus, Unitus International, to, uh, uh, to, para, para meter beca de estudio, para meter a los estudiantes de, de Panamá de llegar uh, de, en Italia y lo mismo atrás. Esa es una muy buena posibilidad 
y nos vamos a acercar en el próximo año a que estarán más de esta posibilidad. Y eso se puede hacer conjuntamente y con una, un agradecimiento de la embajada, de toda la actividad de la embajada, y uh, por otra parte, por el Ministerio de la Agricultura de Panamá. De Panamá. Por eso agradezco muchísimo de esta posibilidad. No sé si los delegados de la embajada de Panamá quieren eh, explicar otra cosa, otra posibilidad, eh, si no, eh, se puede ir adelante. And I come back in English for the other students from abroad, but they are abroad. And now uh, we have some, uh, some minutes to, to, to do some uh, questions, if you have any questions for our invited speaker. Okay, it's possible to say in Italian too. You remember our international activity uh, idea is to change uh, frequently from Italian, Spanish, uh, French, uh, or uh, English uh, language without problems for us and for you. And we try. You, it's possible to a possible fare le domande anche in Italian. Okay, we, we saw the different word, different, different uh, signs uh, from the agricultural economy with uh, Sergio, and thank you very much for this opportunity, for the value chain uh, that is very really well for us. It's, I'm an entomologist, but I'm very interested to, to understand that even the Ins are involved in a uh, in value chain, in a value, um, oh, I lost the word in English. Value chain. Value chain, chain. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you very much um, to Eduardo Lirla, my colleagues, the other entomology, my friends from Argentina, that uh, all the uh, explain how on the connection with the disease, the plant disease, and the insect factor, and the manipulation of the activity of insect from the plant disease. This is the future of activity to understand very well what's happening when an insect is affected from insect disease or plant disease. Okay, thank you very much. And the last one uh, uh, for Stefan, that is one very well that we are connected in every way and every idea. We we are connected uh, uh, with the plants. Sometimes we think that. Our idea is that the insect is uh, one word, and one word are the plants that is not true. We are all connected. The, and the, the example of the liana to remove or not the liana inside the forest connect and have a relationship between the other organism. It's really, very beautiful and it's safe behind. Because I'm in demology cyber class, it, it is, but it is important to all uh, that uh, you explain to us. Fred, I'd like to give the mic. Thanks, thanks a lot. I would have uh, two questions from my side one on economy, for, for economy, and one for forest, but we'll meet this later. And um, I want to say to the students, all the people here, that such kind of events are so important for you. They are important because we study nature, forests, ecosystems, but everything, as we have discussed so far, is intermingled, disconnected. There is no way of studying nature conservation and not studying economy, for example, or the complex relations of plants and animals. So even if one is interested in managing ecosystems, conserving ecosystems, restoring ecosystems, any one of us cannot afford to omit to study this, this stuff, these topics. Economy, 
sociology, plants, animals, ecosystem. There, there is no way of conserving something and forgetting about humans because nowadays we are dominating this planet. We are everywhere. We are a lot and we are changing the biosphere and whatever is around us. So there is no way of understanding the world around us without developing. Uh, when I was a student, it was called the interdisciplinary knowledge, no? to be interdisciplinary. Now you must learn even how to be multidisciplinary. So jump from one expertise to another and another game, knowing biology and ecology, and knowing also economy and sociology, and knowing even technologies and engineering. So every one of you cannot say, say I, will, I like only plants or animals, or I like only computers. No, we need to do start with the sensor and subplots and batteries in the forest and fields to know what plants are doing or cameras. Then we see that this, those forests are conserved because they have been preserved. So there was not an economical interest in those forests at the same time. But now those forests have a big economic interest because they are sequestering a lot of carbon. So, we, and there is carbon, a market for carbon. And it's, it's important for mitigating climate issues. So everything, anything is connected on all these parts. So you must develop and you must uh, um, follow this kind of events, even if they see part from your formation now, but they are an integral part of what you will be tomorrow and what you can do tomorrow. So we'd like to do uh, to make two questions. Not then even if you have some question, not every little demand they were part of the ragazzi approvitare. One in economy, I was, I, was, I was very interested in understanding how much uh, the global global markets can affect the national level or local level uh, supply chains as you described as stakeholders, let's say not top level stakeholders. I would say that, that oh, you respond in Italian or respond in English? Yeah. Okay, you respond in English, but loro capire che è importante anche parlare in altra lingua. E questa è una cosa che io lo dico con cuore e con amore per l'italiano. E l'impero romano si è finito. Devono parlare in altra lingua, scusa, ma questa è la verità. L'italiano non è una lingua internazionale. Si parla solo in Italia e in qualcun posto si parla male. Yeah. <laughs> okay, to answer the question, the more connected the world is, the more important it is to know who is who. You know, because what we are targeting is what is our market? When our market is our town, when our market is our province, when our market is our country, when our, when our market is the continent or is the world. So the more connection we have in societies, in different societies, the more important it is to have this common view of achieving objective together. Because that is kind of a reducing cost and it's increasing confidence and it's increasing and it's making the, the business to get less contracts because contracts are very expensive. So if we work together, we are leveraging our activities and we are reducing costs. So I would say the more connected the world is, the more important it is to have this kind of uh, organizations. They should be international. I don't know. I don't have the, the answer. What I would say is that for countries, it is important to have an entity that is a national entity for each activity. But for instance, I, I've been working in Argentina for several years. You know, this white heresy is because I've got some years uh, of experience, of professional experience. And we were working, for instance, also with the soybean value chain. But for Argentina, it's the most important crop. We have 20 million hectares to soybean. So this is our petroleum in the way of uh, watching. Argentina is exporting soybean. It's one of the major exporters. And there is a huge demand for soybean. 
not for eating the soybean, because there are very few vegetarians that eat the, the vegetarian soybean uh, burger. It's because the Chinese people, they pick the pigs with soybean protein and then transform vegetable proteins into animal proteins and they eat the animal because they are increasing, they are getting better uh, food for them. As they grow in economy, they grow also the quality of food that they consume. In talking about soybean, we were in this Argentinian uh, soybean value chain that also exists, and we were having some common views with other exporters. And there were some importers that they were willing to do some, you know, to impose some conditions on the origin of the soybean because of the GMOs. Do you know what are GMOs? Genetically modified organisms. So when the production of the GMOs, it was a different market because there was the normal soybean and the GMO soybean. Americans and Argentinians would have them because they reduce costs, you have higher yields, and no difference in quality, no scientific proof that there was a modification in anything, but for the application of one herbicide. So we love it. But some other people, Europeans, say, oh, oh GMOs, we don't like them. And we are reaching out to choose what we, what we eat. So we ban it. But what about the Chinese, that our, our consumers? Are they going to buy it? So this is a big risk. So what we did was to have another organization that was over-national, that was an international organization of the very few soybean export centers. So we created one new organization for dealing with this threats. So it is important, I believe it is. The more connected we are, the more we are. And one other concept that I would like to share with the students is that economy is not an exact science, it's sociology. So it's not mathematics, it's the knowledge of people, what they want, what they do, how they react. So this is the concept that I believe that sometimes is confusing, that they believe that it's all mathematics. It's not, it's sociology. Thanks. I have a question for Steph. Okay, yeah, do it. <laughs> I have a question for you. Uh, is there any value for the Yana's production? Because I know that trees are very valuable. Some species have, have a huge value on the market. And that's why there is all this illegal logging and uh, smuggling. That you say, is it possible to smuggle? one tree that is 30 meters long, and they, they do somehow. But there is any market for the lianas, because if there is no value for the lianas, who will be cutting the lianas, if not you for science? Um, <laughs> and the next for you. Oh, no, there's no, there's no actual market for for going on a wood, right? So there's no one going in and talking. To, there is an Asia for the rattan. Rattan. So so rattan is a palm, and it's a climbing palm. Something like twenty five percent of all palm species are are rattans. Almost always found in Asia, there's only one species in, in the neotropics. Mm -hmm. They are a big problem of with unharvest. But for, for neotropical forests, there's no market at all. So you can keep it. So Ratan is a climbing palm. No? Climbing palms. So what, what I was wanted to ask of is uh, uh, related to palm presence there in those forests. If, if you have me, may have seen is in Stefan's photos, in those forests, the trees, there are many tree species like angiosperms, fruiting trees, but there are also many palms. Have you noticed that in his photos? Many palms are living in the forest, are forest trees. Hmm? Yeah. 
So what, what role do they have or what particular ecology or biology do they have to enter? Because for us, yeah, it's very anomalous. Yeah, that's a lot of officers. Um, <clears throat> there's two canopy palms that they grow they're very, very tall. And then there's six, there's ten species of under, more understory palms. Um, and when you start moving into wetter and wetter forests, there's a lot more species, a lot more palm grown. And so, yeah, but they're they're a very common part of the forest, and they they produce really big seeds. Um, they're a valuable resource for the animals and and people, and then people also make wine out of the palm pulp, oh. palm wine. Never, no. maybe, but, but <laughs> it's why? not particularly <laughs> It's a very it's very crude wine. But it it, uh, it ferments as alcohol. <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they're quite few, and and um, and they're quite. Uh, uh, can they be competitive with other tree species like di uh, dicots in in growth? Well, they're competitive enough to remain in the community, um, but they're not terribly competitive. I don't think they're displacing any trees. We're also very light wood. You know, it's not real wood. Palms don't grow in diameter. You know, they they, they basically they don't have what's called secondary growth, which I think many of you in the Fritos class have, haven't learned about yet. Not, but, but just in a few weeks. So palms are are monocots, they don't have secondary growth, so they're not going to grow really, really big like a tree, they just grow tall and they maintain the diameter that they started. Thanks. Qualche domanda? It's free. It's gratis. Yeah. Free of charge. Io ho due domande. Posso? Certo. Prego. Okay. Yes. La prima è per il primo relatore che ha parlato dell'Argentina. Del, si sì. <laughs> del sistema di mettere insieme tutti i stakeholders e in Argentina in particolare lei ha studiato qual era il anello della catena quello il più debole e se l'avete risolto come avete risolto come siete riusciti ad interfacciare interfacciarvi col governo e sistemare che penso sia stata una cosa difficile che pensi voi che restare con l'anello più debole della catena come quella del grano Io non ti ho fatto la domanda a te, <ride> io pare tipo, erano, erano ad esempio gli agricoltori o altri strati della società o della catena? Puoi ripetere per favore? Non ti ho ascoltato. Uh, erano, dico, erano gli agricoltori l'anello più debole o un'altra parte la, della supply chain okay. il marketing devo dare la risposta l'anello più debole sempre è il produttore agricolo perché? perché questo che ho detto prima un'azienda di esportazione di grano di qualunque produzione agricola Carpin, ADM Bunge are they international companies that they are all over the world, they have customers here, they have providers here. So they are huge companies making huge profits. And then you have one farmer. And the farmer is, even if it is a big farmer, how much he's producing? 0. 0. 0.0000 whatever percentage of the production. So farmers are normally the weakest uh, 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 stakeholders in the value chain, always. How we solve this problem? That was one of your questions. I'm watching here because I don't know who made the question, but it was on the computer that came. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah, so what we did, it was to balance the power in between the different stakeholders. So for instance, the president of the national value chain organization, it is always a farmer. Why? Because we want to give visibility to the, to the weakest stakeholder. We don't want to have 
one exporter coming to say what we are going to be doing with the value chains. So that was one way to make this weakest to be representative. Also, there were some logistics and budget constraints. For instance, who was paying for the organization? In the United States, they have the checkoff. There is money that farmers have to pay out of the sale of each ton, they don't measure in tons, but each ton of whatever grain they produce, they have to pay a checkoff. And that money is, is budget for one national organization that is almost like a value chain, that is making promotion of this grain in the world. But what in Argentina, that we have not only, do, we don't have checkoff, but we have export taxes. So farmers are willing to pay more money. They have a very risky activity and they don't want to spend more money. So what we did was to invite the wealthy exporters to be subsidizing some of these activities. So what we did was a balance, but this is, this is a, you know, this is a, a very difficult activity that someone has to do, you know, to make this not to fall down. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. The other question is about the la lianas. Stefano. Yeah. Is this study uh, will be used by FAO or some international organization to set a standard or to observe other forests in other tropical areas like India or in Southeast Asia? to see if there is a correlation between this overgrowth from the lianas and if it is a, 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 um, a commun an international community that is growing about to set a, a procedure, I don't know, a, a ruling. Do you understand? Uh, to rule about. That's a, very, that's a very good question. Um, there's actually no, there's no organized group at that level. You know, the way these, this research tends to work is that you just have small research groups that, that do their own studies independent of others. And then eventually the literature starts to accumulate and people um, start to then focus on the emerging picture based on the data. Uh, there is actually some work. It's interesting that you mentioned India. There is some work coming up in India. They're actually quite good in ecology, um, and they do a lot of ecology. So, so we do know that that lianas are increasing in some Indian forest, but there's no concerted effort to quantify this pattern beyond what individual research groups are doing. But um, if you have a, a link. To, any of these groups who would like to fund this kind of activity, this is exactly what we're looking for. Okay. Uh, thank you very much to everybody who stay here with us with a lot of power to, to, to listen to different science, a different idea, different research. It's really, really uh, a pleasure for us. I don't know if, no sé, todavía está también la embajada, embajada de Panamá, no sé si, si quiere hacer una pregunta o hablar o explicar no sé qué, pero me gustaría explicar otra vez que como departamento le damos un agradecimiento para esa posibilidad. Thank you very much for the greetings. Of the institutional committees from the uh, ambassador and Alfredo. If you we don't have any question more or uh, anything to do, anything to explain, I uh, can thank the. Okay, we write at the end of this even this, this short seminars, short workshop for this year. Again, again, thank you very much for the presence here. And we uh, push every day you to, to see the world, but all the world, not only near my house, okay?
and good luck for your activity here. Ciao.